again, your favorite cringy girl, and this is another vlog of my travel trip in China. I took a train all the way to Shanghai. I had to reschedule the train because I lost my passport, and I got my new passport yesterday. And now I have to go to the consulate to get a new visa to travel China. Uh, but during this time, I also did a cosplay photo shoot and tried a lot of yummy food and saw a lot of cool architecture here, so enjoy this travel vlog of mine, all right? <laughs> For lunch, I went to a restaurant where all the waiters and waitresses wore cow ears and you got to pick the piece of meat you wanted to eat and they weighed it for you. I spent all day at some sort of transportation police station. I am not quite sure what it is called, but I will make a YouTube video about what to do if you lose your visa in another country because I'm pretty sure the protocol is the same in most countries. But I got the last piece of documentation I needed so I could ride the train to Shanghai without my passport because I was on a mission to get to Shanghai because I already had hotel reservations and uh, Shanghai had a, a United States consulate so I was able to get a temporary one-year visa. So after all that work to get the documents, the food was really good. I waited at the train station also, one thing I notice about the train station is it's very clean. It is also very organized. I got in my seat and there is so much leg room. It was amazing, way better than an airplane. And the seats reclined way further back than an airplane. Honestly, I'd rather ride 24 hours on a train than spend 16 hours in an airplane if I had to. I didn't need to though. This, this train ride was only six hours to Shanghai. But I'm just saying, if you had the choice between a longer train ride or a cramped airplane, I'd choose the longer train ride. You also get to see all these new and different nice sceneries, and the bathrooms on the train were a lot bigger too. The train also has Wi-Fi, which I was very happy for. Since I am not in the United States, I have to use roaming data. Or is it data roaming? I'm not quite sure what it is, but it is very slow. Maybe it is just because I have T-Mobile, I'm not sure. But it was a very fun and pleasant experience. I'm happy I got to do this at least once in my life. If you ever want to travel around the world, the most expensive thing you will find is the plane ticket. I use the Amex travel card, so once I spent enough money, I got points that I used for a whole plane ticket to China and back home. Also, the train gives you a lot of cool snacks. My favorite snack was the bag of yellow peanuts. It kind of tasted like Nutter Butter cookies. But going back to traveling, if you want to travel and if you're able to get that plane ticket down, then everything else isn't as expensive as it may seem. For one, the conversion rate is really good from US dollar to the Chinese yen. Or is it pronounced the yawn? I don't know. I apologize. Feel free to correct me in the comments down below. So things in China are a lot cheaper. For example, I got boba tea and it's only about one to two dollars for a boba tea. Maybe more if you get something fancy. But in the US, for the American dollar worth, it would be about, I don't know, five to seven bucks sometimes. I also highly recommend getting a travel card of some sort. Now, it does not have to be the Amex travel card. I just use the Amex travel card. But with travel cards, a lot of times there are very good deals at some very nice hotels, like which I've been staying at, where maybe one night is just $100 and you also get a certain amount of hotel credit that you can use on food every night. So I'll, all my dinners have been included with my hotels if I eat at my hotel and all my breakfasts and my hotel, at least my first hotel, I thought it was very beautiful and it was only $100 for a night and I stayed there for a whole week. So it's like $700 for a week. So a whole month would be $2,400. And in the United States, $2,400 is like rent at a apartment for one month. You can also save money by staying at hostels or doing more research and staying at even cheaper hotels. I'm right now eating breakfast, so I apologize if there's noise in the background of the rest of this video. But I arrived to the Shanghai train station and just look how shiny the floors are. Very, very clean. And then I stayed at the Conrad. I noticed a trend of glass art hanging from the ceiling in a lot of hotels. And it's just so pretty to look at. It was really late when I arrived. I was so tired when I arrived, I forgot to film what my hotel room looked like. This hotel also had a breakfast buffet. 
Personally, I like the food at this hotel better than the other, mostly because of the pumpkin cake. Also, the breakfast buffets at the hotels I've been to so far in China have been more nutritious than the ones in America. Lots of whole, unprocessed foods, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. I don't think I filmed all the food for the breakfast buffet, but just know it was a lot of different choices and a lot of yummy foods. There was also a lot of different carb options like rice and noodles and breads, but I tried to stay away from that. Except for a piece of pumpkin cake I mentioned earlier. I, I really like pumpkin cake a lot. Fruits and vegetables have carbs, but I believe they're more nutrient dense, so I'd rather eat fruits and vegetables than bread and rice. After that, I had to leave to go pick up my temporary passport. Here are just some views from inside the city after I left my hotel. I was trying to find somewhere to take my passport pictures, but I couldn't find it and I was running out of time before the agency closed. The agency was inside a mall. I just decided to leave and take my pictures there. Also, a lot of the bathrooms in Shanghai are not the squatty kind. I mean, you will find the squatty kind, but I found most bathrooms to be the, the sitting kind. Mind you, I don't sit on the toilet when I go and, you know, do my thing. I'm always squatting, but like... The sitting kind, you, you don't have to squat as low. Also, pretty much every bathroom doesn't have toilet paper inside the stall. It's like one big roll that everyone has to go to and take from before going into the bathroom. Unless you bring your own, you know? So here's some more views of the roads in Shanghai. I was on my way after to go to a little cosplay photo shoot. There was a studio I found where they had little sceneries and I cosplayed Nezuko. From Demon Slayer, Violet Evergarden from Violet Evergarden, and she he from Genshin Impact. I hope I'm saying her name right. I'm sorry if I'm not. My apologies. Also, another fun thing to know is dryers are not very common, or at least not very commonly used, and a lot of people will hang up their clothes from their balconies to dry. Very smart, very innovative. I believe this is done because the dryers can damage the clothes, and I think there's also the belief that the sun can kill extra uh, germs and bacteria and mites. So here's the cosplay studio. The staff was all very friendly, and they had a lot of different packages for cosplaying. You also take off your shoes and wear indoor shoes, which I thought was nice. And here are just some clips from around the studio. I didn't film as much inside the changing room area as I would have liked to show because there were so many cosplays everywhere and so many wig heads lined up on the wall that were styled. The studio does not come with a photographer though. I mean, maybe if you contacted ahead of time, you could arrange for someone in the studio to take your pictures. But I hired someone off of online to come to the studio and take my pictures for me. And she was very nice. And she helped take some video clips for me as well. Also, the pictures turned out so good. I just didn't get the chance to put them on my phone and to add to this video or post online yet. So stay tuned for Instagram and Twitter and TikTok to see all the cool pictures I took in these cosplays. My favorite scenery in the studio was this little garden, especially the swing. I felt like a fairy princess. Or maybe a demon princess. I mean, Nezuko is a demon after all. I rented the cosplays from the studio, which is a lot cheaper than buying them, and a lot more convenient than having to pack the cosplay and bring with me all the way from the United States to China. Now the only downside is all the cosplays kind of smelt just a little sweaty or just a little, a little off. I'm sure the studio does their best to clean them, but once they are worn so many times by so many different people, it just, there's some sort of smell that just lingers. But that was literally the only downside of the whole experience. The staff will also help you make sure that you put your cosplay on correctly, which I appreciate so much because so many times I've put on my cosplay and I've forgotten something, or maybe I wore a scarf as a waist belt, or I'm just not thinking and I forget a piece. So here are some of the other sceneries in the studio that you could choose from. I use this scenery for Vi my Violet Evergarden cosplay, which you will see. Hello, that's me. I use this scenery for my Shihi cosplay from Genshin Impact. With the furniture and the setting, it just kind of fit the vibes of the video game. The studio also comes with photography lights, and there are also tripod stands and selfie stands. 
You can use the studio as long as you like for the most part, so long as the studio isn't overbooked. There was also a small little school setting which I used for fun after. When renting three different cosplays, the studio also let you choose from a back room of different fun cute outfits, not necessarily cosplay outfits, just kind of like hand foos, school uniforms, cute dresses, some dark themed goth clothes, lots to choose from. I hired two different photographers for the photo shoot. One helped with the Violet Evergarden cosplay, while one helped with the Nezuko and the she he cosplay. Both photographers were very nice, very kind. They also spoke a little English, which helped the photo shoot move along smoothly. I hope next time I come back I learn more Mandarin, and I'll be semi-fluent. But right now all I can say is Ting Bu Dong and Bu Ju Dao, which is I don't understand and I don't know. I've actually learned a lot more Mandarin than I thought I would learn and I know a fair amount of the basics. I am still not that good with the tones and I can't understand everything that people say to me. But I will say that there have been a lot of times where I hear people talking to me or around me like friends and I can figure out what they're saying because they are saying some words and some phrases and tones I know. So I'm like, oh, I know what they're saying. I can kind of understand what's happening. So I feel pretty proud about that. I'd also like to impress my friends in China when I come back to visit again with the Mount of Mandarin I know. Learning Spanish was a lot easier for me than learning Mandarin has been. In Spanish, I can speak, read, and write for the most part. I feel pretty confident in my Spanish, not every word, but I studied it for a few years now that I think I could go to a country in South America and communicate with the people and understand where I'm at and be pretty, pretty good well off. But in China, if I did not have the help of my friends, I probably would have had a lot more problems and issues than I've already had. In China, though, a lot of people do speak English, which has been helpful, but I've uh, a lot of my friends, or a few of them, have been a little shy to show off some of their English. And I always hear some people go, I'm sorry, my English is bad, but if we can have a conversation, your English is perfect, way, way better than my Mandarin. I also think traveling and trying to learn new languages help you learn and understand other cultures. Oh, here's one of the cosplay rooms. This room isn't with the cosplays from animes or video games. This is just hand foos and school uniforms and other pretty dresses and outfits you could choose from. That's me. Hey, just posing. I don't know why I'm posing, just showing off my butt, but I am. And here are some clips of me in the school uniform I found. A lot of the outfits didn't fit me. They fit my waist, but not like my hip and my shoulder top area but this one fit so I was pretty happy it took a moment for me to find maybe the top was a little too small but it was the best I was going to do for now the studio probably had somewhere between one to two hundred cosplays but I think only like 20 actually fit me in my size and my proportions that is I mean cosplays related to anime and video games there were more outfits I could choose from but they weren't really related to any specific character. I believe I was in the studio for about three to four hours and after saying goodbye to everyone I went home. I also thought it was interesting how right next to a cosplay studio was a technology company. Anyways I went home during peak rush hour but I kind of liked being able to see all the lights in the car having to stop so I can observe everything. There are so many beautiful bright lights in Shanghai, but nothing beat the city walk, or is it called the night walk? I'm not quite sure, but it's around this big lake. I'll be showing it at the end of this vlog, but that was a really beautiful sight. I went back to my new hotel. Well, is this new? No, the same hotel. I got a different room that day because I got a f upgrade. I went out to eat because my credit card for the hotel had a $60 spending limit, or maybe it was a hundred, I don't quite remember, but of 60 to hundred dollars of free food I could get because I used my Amex travel card and it was a part of the bonus or perk with the card. 
The next day I went out to go to a new hotel. I wanted to try different hotels to see the different vibes and they were in different locations closer to things I wanted to see and sightsee. So here's just a drive from one hotel to the next hotel just to show off the city and maybe if you guys are curious and want to see what it looks like, you know, here's what I saw and here's what you will probably see if you ever did decide you wanted to go visit Shanghai. I wanted to be a little fancy and I stayed at the Ritz Carlton for about two nights. This is right now currently the second night. I've been voicing over this the past two days in between all the activities I've been doing. They had these yummy little candies at check-in. Also, do not lose your passport. Oh my goodness. I had to go through so much paperwork to show I can register at the hotel. I had special permission from the police report showing I lost my passport from the transportation bureau or this company that gives you permission to travel around China when you lose your passport and all these documentations just so I could sign in, which makes sense. You know, you don't want some random person from some random country that you know nothing about signing into your hotel especially when it's against the law so i was a law-abiding visitor of china and it was a big pain in the buttock so please please if you travel keep really good track of your passport because this would also probably happen in other countries as well all that extra work so here's some more footage going around the city just to see the different architecture and the different roads and different cars. I mean, it's, so it's really similar to the U.S., but also there's those differences that you just know it's not the U.S. And those differences make me happy. But I went to the Chinese consulate to try to get my new visa so I can visit China again legally. But it did not go according to plan, and I actually need to go to a different Chinese consulate to get my visa, or my Chinese visa, to move around China. But I'm running out of time because I'm going back to the United States, so I might just apply for a exiting visa so I can leave China. Anyways, here's some food. It was a long drive. It was a lot of work. A lot of people had to talk to. Food tastes even better when you're already so tired and hungry. But here's the hotel. I went back and I took a couple video clips just so I could show you guys where I was staying. And look at that view. You could see everything from out this window. You could even see the, uh, that, I forget what it's called, but it's basically the, uh, it's the broadcasting tower of Shanghai. And the hotel even gave you little chocolates and apples. Some more of the view from my hotel just because it was very, very pretty and I was very grateful to be there in that moment and I appreciated everything about the hotel and the experience I was having and my ability to be there in that moment and have the time to do so. Most of the hotel rooms I stayed in were really cheap. However, I wanted to spend a little extra on this hotel room for two nights just because I wanted to make some content in there specifically for my blue page which funds my adventures and my cosplays and my rent and when I'm not traveling, I'm at home, and I cook at home, and I pay very little in rent, and I don't have a car, so I am saving a lot of money just so I could go out and travel. I went to explore a university, and I didn't take any pictures at the university, but I did run into some cats, and these cats were so friendly and nice, and yeah, I took some pictures with the cats. After that, I had some soup dumplings, and I explored the Shanghai with two of my friends, and here are some of the lights, and I think this is called the City Walk. This is where the City Walk starts, I believe. A lot of fun stores, and I was told by my friend that yesterday it was double the amount of people. I believe because yesterday was Saturday or Sunday, and then now it's a weekday, so it's not as crowded. So please enjoy the sights of Shanghai. I also went into a couple stores, and there was a big giant fans shoe store. But Vans is a United States brand. I believe the headquarters are in Colorado. So in the United States, Vans would probably be, what, maybe 60, 70 bucks at most, I believe. But here in China, they were 100 to 120 bucks, like USD. So I think in China, some imported brands, especially from the United States, are at a higher price. So don't buy United States brands in China. However, I did go to Uniqlo like a week before this, and the 
clothes at Uniqlo were cheaper than in the United States. Probably by five to eight bucks, five to eight dollars an item. Oh yeah, look at these butterflies that glow and light up and they're flying. There were a bunch of these little balls of full of butterflies all around the walkway. Also, one side of the river is full of old buildings that are European styled, while the other side of the river is full of modern buildings, which are full of big bright lights and, you know, modern styled. Also, so many people go on this walk and take pictures. It's kind of fun to see. Some people even do live broadcasting on this walk. But that is pretty much all I did for the night. Just walked around this walk for about 30 minutes to an hour and enjoyed the company of my friends, took some pictures, got to see so many beautiful things, and I really truly am happy I have the opportunity to travel and see new things in the world and experience things before I get older and maybe, I don't know what will happen, maybe I'll have a family, maybe I'll just have a bunch of cats or dogs or something, who knows, but when you get older maybe you don't have as much energy or time you know, just other obligations. So I was happy to travel and experience this. I hope you had fun watching that vlog. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Take care, everyone.